What's your experience and best advice with proving parental alienation in court? Is this a widely recognized and accepted issue in the courts? I live in a one-party consent state with regards to voice recordings. I have more than 60 recordings of my boyfriend trying to speak with his daughter. And we have caught his ex-wife expressly coaching the child, disparaging the father with the child present, and also expressly stating that she will not let the child see her father. Is this proof adequate? Could you give some clear ways of parental alienation in court? We live about nine hours away from the ex. She has refused to give us the address of the child for over a year. You know, on that note, one thing I would ask is my different requests for the address. Like, how are you sending the requests? Are you sending them via email or via text message? I'm hoping that they're in writing. So I would index the various requests that I've made and the lack of response. I mentioned this before. In one situation I had several years ago, a judge ordered that the other party would get sole decision making or sole custody of a, a couple's child or a separated couple's child because my client wasn't responding to the other side's emails and the judge said that showed a lack of co-parenting and a lack of an ability to co-parent. So if you're reaching out and trying to communicate and you're not getting responses, I think that's like exhibit A there. And one thing, if you have multiple attempts at communicating, you know, say 50 or 100, I you know, don't expect the judge necessarily to want to read all of those. So there is a rule of evidence that allows you to make summary documentation. If you have multiple attempts at reaching out and um, getting the address, maybe put those in an index and you have the backup documentation, disclose the other side and ready in court just in case you need it. Same with the recordings. Obviously, you know, there's a limited amount of time to present your case in court. You're probably not gonna have time to present 60 recordings. If I were presenting a case like this, I would choose maybe, you know, like three or four at most of the best recordings, best ones for your case and play them. And hopefully they're not too long. I think the best quality recordings in terms of containing the content that is most representative of the communication that you have with the other party. And then I would probably index the other, all the other recordings and have them available just in case. The trial I had last week, there was probably a few hundred pages worth of text messages or email messages from my client to the other side attempting to co-parent. One thing we could have done better is maybe prepared one of these indexes, but we didn't. We pinpointed for the judge the specific messages that we wanted her to review. Another thing that may help you in court, especially if you have a lot of recordings and a lot of emails and text messages trying to prove this alienation is Bates stamping all of these papers and bait stamping there's programs available and i don't know where the word baits where that origin originates from but basically you're putting a page number that is unique to your case on each of these documents and all of this can do be done electronically as long as you've scanned your document like when i started practicing law we had to hand stamp bates numbers on every single page for thousands of pages but now you can do it like in an instant with some online programs. And that will really help you cut to the chase when you're in the courtroom trying to refer to a specific text message or email or transcript of a voice recording. And that's another thing on these voice recordings. You could get transcripts done. A judge is probably gonna wanna be uh, see certified transcripts, meaning that these transcripts are prepared by somebody who's certified to prepare transcripts and they're saying that they're a true and correct copy of the original audio recording. As far as my experience with parental alienation, I don't know that it's widely recognized. It sure is asserted a lot by a lot of people. In almost every case that I have, I would say the, you know, the word alienation comes up. And as a result, I think judges don't take it that seriously. So you really have to come forward with the proof. The voice recordings help, multiple emails would help, the other side listening in on conversations would help, the other side trying to poison the child's mind against you would help. You know, if the child is saying, mom or dad told me this, or the child is saying things that you know are not coming from the child. In a case that I had several months ago, this small little child was telling my client, you lie, you're a liar. And we know this wasn't coming from the child. This was coming from what the child was hearing while at the mother's house. It's not widely recognized. I don't think it's accepted. You have to come forward with the proof, just like 
Cuba Gooding, Gooding said and Jerry Maguire, I don't know if any of you have ever seen that movie, he said, show me the money. The judge is saying when they're sitting on the stand saying, show me the proof. That's what you have to do. So the recordings are good. And I would have several of them probably transcribed by a certified person, transcriber. And I don't know if it's adequate. I mean, I don't know because I don't know where you live. I don't know about your judge. I don't know about your judge's experiences. Every judge is different. I talk about this a lot too in my videos. You know, you are at the mercy of a judge and that judge's life experience. So one of the cases that I recently had, my client was in front of one judge several years ago and there was domestic violence in the case and the judge really poo-pooed the domestic violence and just made my client feel about like this small. And when I read about the allegations of domestic violence that she brought forward, I was astounded because, you know, any other judge I think would have, would not have treated her that way. See, but this was a common complaint that we heard about this judge. And frankly, I think he was just an angry judge who didn't want to be doing family law because I had similar experiences with him on different cases. When I went into court in front of a different judge with this client, she got treated much differently than the prior judge. You know, the summary documents, which are the rules of evidence in Arizona, 1006, they may, it may be the same rule of evidence in other jurisdictions, but I have used these summary documents in the past and they're very helpful. They help me cut to the chase and they help you stay organized for the judge. And really that's the most important thing, unless you're in the jury state. You know, the judge is the one that you need to persuade and the easier you can make it for the judge, the better. So keep it simple.